Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountaintop. I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Greetings and salutations. And good morning, everyone. It's yours truly, Dan Adams, a.k.a. the Soulful Conservative, the DA and the Prosecutor. And I am the Masters of Ceremonies and host of this particular broadcast. And this is the Dan Adams Show. And this is Tuesday, August 29th, 2017 or 2017, whichever way you say it. Now, in a better mood than I was yesterday I had Houston and Texas and the surrounding areas on my mind all day yesterday and still are on my mind but I'm at a point where God has given me some some peace God has given me some strength God has given me some wisdom and some understanding to attack today better than I did yesterday and for that, I am grateful. And with that, I'm going to give him the honor and the praise, give my Lord and Savior the honor and the praise that they deserve. And I'm going to, once again, send out my thoughts and prayers to those dealing with the horrific, and I mean horrific, aftermath. And from what I'm hearing in the Houston area, they're going to get dumped with another 20 plus inches of rain in these next couple of days which makes it even more horrific. I mean, I don't know I don't know what their levee or dam situation or water blockage solution they have in place in those areas. But already we've seen record levels of flooding. And to add on 20 more inches I'm not even sure what's that going to... I, 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 I'm almost... Don't even want to think about it, but you have to. You have to wrap your head around it to understand the severity of it. Now, I want to get back to Hurricane Harvey and its aftermath, but I want to talk about a few things before I do. As I said, yesterday wasn't a great day. Didn't want to talk about much. I did my radio show last night. And wasn't going to do it because I wasn't in the mood, but I did it anyway, which got me on a better level of thinking, a better path of 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 actually dealing with these with this this horrific, horrific aftermath of Hurricane Harvey, now tropical storm. And what I discussed last night was was this ad hoc it was off the head off the cuff you know freestyling but today there's a couple of topics and subjects i do want to talk about and pinpoint on i want to talk about the berkeley situation that went down on sunday with antifa antifa and typha shutting down a peaceful patriot prayer rally that the organizers sole purpose was to bring together moderate Democrats, moderate Republicans, and anyone else who wanted to come and pray and converse and talk about coming together 
and, and talking about differences and things of that nature. And you're thinking to yourself, even as me as a conservative, I would have been like, I would have went there, even with moderate Democrats. If they're there to be peaceful and to converse and possibly talk about solutions to the issues that we may have, that we have out, out here in America, I would have been all for it. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, you have the now milit militant arm. That's right. They are the new militant arm of the Democrat Party, Antifa, Antifa, and Typha. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I say this, and I talked about it just a smidgen on last night's show. But I'm going to get in, in depth into it right now. Chuck Todd, Don Lemon, and any other of these other liberal numbnut moon bats coming to the defense coming to the aid trying to rationalize that's right ladies and gentlemen rationalize the violence that is coming from Antifa Antifa and Typha as their outlet of trying to diminish trying to combat against and ultimately defeat freedom of speech. Any speech that they deem that they don't support or, or accept. So, I stated last night on the show, and there's an article on my website, thepoliticalheat.com. All one word, thepoliticalheat.com. Where a gentleman, a white gentleman, walking down the path of Antifa, Antifa, and Typha, minding his own business, wearing a blue polo shirt. He was just documenting, recording on his phone, the happenings and goings-on with the policeless Berkeley riots and protests happening on Sunday. He wasn't talking to anyone. He wasn't screaming at anyone. He wasn't in anyone's face. But these domestic terrorists, Antifa, Antifa, and Typha, decided to call out and yell at this man and describe and portray him and label him a Nazi. And with that, they surrounded him they had a large, like, sheet, black sheet, that they covered him up with. And he's standing there saying, hey, I'm here just to document. I'm not here. I'm not on either side. I'm just here. You're in a public place, and I wanted to document this. I'm here. And I'm, I'm for peace. I'm not here to disrupt. So they decide to take his phone. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. They take this gentleman's phone for what reason? They don't want to be documented on video. They don't want to be placed on social media and put on blast. But they come out all big, bad, and braggadocious and bold with their little black masks on and little black bandanas covering their identities. So you're supposed to be that big, bad, and bold and braggadocious, but you cover up your face. So when you happen to, I guess, either go to work or go to school, no one knows that you're a domestic terrorist. No one knows that you're a violent thug. No one knows that you have stooped to this level trying to defeat freedom of speech trying to defeat the the freedom of individuals gathering peacefully so if you're so big bad and bold and braggadocious then let your face be shown let your voice be heard let the world know who you are no they can't do that they won't do that because they're little punks yeah they're, they're domestic terrorists because of the terrorism that they're inflicting on the public. But they're nothing but little punks. 
nothing but little thugs. That's right. And I am including any demographic in that particular description. Whether you're a woman, man, child, black, white, Asian, Hispanic. If you're part of this domestic terrorist group, Antifa, Antifa, and Typha, then you're nothing but a punk and you're nothing but a thug. Where was the police? That's what I want to... Where was the police? Where were the authorities to stop the violence? And there are documented stories all across the World Wide Web and the Internet and, the, and social media. Where were the police? I know that this went down in California. You had the liberal numbnut moonbat Princess Nancy Pelosi come out and say that anyone that was against Antifa, Antifa, Antifa that they are white supremacists. This coming from a woman who's supposedly a Catholic and supports abortion. This coming from a woman who was former Speaker of the House, who bitched and complained that her private jet supplied by the American taxpayer was too small. This coming from a woman who was completely and utterly nuts, who honestly, I think, is in the early forms and stages of either Alzheimer Alzheimer's or dementia. Do you do you see her her interviews? Do you see how she talks? That is not a lucid individual. That is not a normal thinking individual. And someone either within her family or those in her circle need to look at that and look at it seriously. That that woman needs some medical attention. Now, as I stated, where were the police? Where were the authorities? Seems to me that once Antifa, Antifa, Antifa had a stronghold on that area, they disappeared. And that's when the violence started. And that's when journalists and reporters and the opposition started getting hit with locks and bats and belts batons and anything else that these punk thugs brought to the occasion now you look at it like this there's a petition going around right now that's getting major major support in regards to Dedicating and, de and, and defining and labeling Antifa, Antifa, Antifa as a domestic terrorist group. Will it happen? I'm hoping it will under President Trump's administration. I am hoping that with this added scrutiny, this added I guess heat, if you want to call it, put upon Antifa, 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 that some of these individuals will either not participate in this terrorism, be afraid to participate in this terrorism, and if you do participate in these acts of terrorism, that the authorities will do their job and arrest these people. Not allow them to roam free. Not allow them, as the Baltimore mayor said, back when that whole Freddie Gray craziness went down, allow them, ladies and gentlemen, to loot. Allow them to destroy. Allow them 
to be unlawful citizens of the United States of America. So, as I wrap this subject up with a little bow, let me end it with this. Antifa, Antifa, Antifa. If I were to ever encounter you, and if you lay your hands on me in any way, form, or fashion, be prepared for a beat down. Now, Let's go ahead and talk about what just happened last night in regards to da -da 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 North Korea. What the hell's going on out here? That's right, Vince. What the hell is going on out here? North Korea and it has been finally, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for here, by the Japanese authorities confirmed, thank you, the word finally came to my brain, confirmed by Japanese authorities that a, ballist, a ballistic missile was flown over Japan by North Korea. Now, what does this mean? I don't know. I'm not sure what it means. I do know that North Korea and their maniacal leader, Kim Jong-un, are complete and utter moon bats. I think they're just doing this just to do it and to stir up controversy, stir up emotions, have people talking about North Korea. Maybe this is this is what is what it is with this with this numb nut. He just wants people talking about him. I don't know, but I don't know what the implications will be and the consequences thereof in regards to. Kim Jong-un firing that ballistic missile over, over Japan. That puts Japan in a state of emergency. That puts Japan on its heels. That puts Japan in combat mode. But what does that mean for America and for our alliances and for our coalition? I don't know. I'm looking forward to seeing what our military and what our commander-in-chief president trump has to say in regards to this it will be very interesting very very interesting to see now i want to talk about a local situation that was made public last night and put on blast by our incompetent idiotic lunatic maniacal mayor bill peduto now and several neighborhoods here in Pittsburgh a water of advisory excuse me is in full effect boil and flush is in full effect so I cannot name off as I'm driving via the political heat remote studios my car and name off all the affected neighborhoods just go to wpxi.com wtae.com or kdka.com and if you live in pittsburgh and want to know if you're affected but you should know right now if your neighborhood and area is affected but i heard in passing pittsburgh's mayor bill peduto talk about how the infrastructure from our water authority is a mess and has been for years so I'm thinking to myself, hmm, Mr. Bill Peduto, Mr. Anti-Trumper, Never-Trumper, Mr. Sanctuary City, Mr. Climate Change. So you have gone out of your way to condemn the actions and the administrative I guess entities and actions that President Trump wants to put forth you came all out in a, in a ruckus and against the climate change accord that President Trump unsigned and disavowed 
and flush down the garbage in regards to America's involvement. You went above and beyond and have gone above and beyond in regards to trying to make Pittsburgh a sanctuary city. So you are dedicating funds to those idiotic, and I mean idiotic factions where I guarantee you if you even polled some of the Democrats that voted for you, that they would say, wait a minute, now we have a major issue with our water across major neighborhoods across the city. They wouldn't want you concentrating on climate change and sanctuary cities and illegal aliens. They want you to put money towards the infrastructure that you should have been making sure as at its top and peak capacity and its ability to be a safe haven and to make sure and to enhance our current infrastructure that would not allow a situation like this to occur. From what I'm hearing at one of the reservoirs, actually a couple of the main reservoirs that are affecting these neighborhoods, I guess the lining has, I guess, either deteriorated or has uh, dis, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for, ladies and gentlemen? I haven't had my coffee yet, and you know how I get down. But this liner, just think of a liner on a pool. And when it slips off, what does that allow to get in? Bacteria. And supposedly, you know, uh, fecal matter from birds and things of that nature could get into the water reservoir. Now, they're saying, hey, it's not life-threatening. Just boil your water in the affected areas and you should be fine. But what does that say going forward, ladies and gentlemen? What does that say as far as the infrastructure that is in place right now? And why did it get so bad? Why did the mayor, who took it upon himself to become an anti-Never Trumper and dedicated funds, ladies and gentlemen, and probably is still dedicating funds to combat the initiatives put forth from President Trump? Hello, Mayor Bill Peduto. Your number one concern is not what President Trump is doing, jackass. Your number one goal is to support, protect, build up, and be at the beck and call of the constituents and citizens of Pittsburgh. And nowhere else. You should not be concerning yourself with climate change. You shouldn't be concerning yourself with sanctuary cities. You shouldn't be concerning yourself with the liberal leftist numbnut moonbat agenda trying to be shoved down our throats by the DNC and the Democrat Party and the leftist lamestream media. Your sole focus and concern should be about the citizens of the city of Pittsburgh. And right now, you got a situation with our water that needs to be addressed and addressed immediately. So whatever funds that you may have funneled or wanted to funnel towards climate change and sanctuary cities and whatever left this liberal numbnut moon by the agenda item you may have on your docket, you might as well just Put pen to paper, find some eraser somewhere, some whiteout somewhere, and just delete and erase those agenda items. Your number one concern right now should be the water situation that is going on in our city. Point blank, end of story. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to end my broadcast for this morning and I want to revert back and come back and come full circle in regards to Hurricane Harvey 
and the devastation down in Texas. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you're asking yourself, what can I do? I've been asking myself, what can I do? Number one, you can pray. That is easy. And that is needed by many individuals who have posted on social media and across the internet and the world wide web. Your prayers are needed. So take a few minutes. Get down on your knees if you can. And just ask that God be with those individuals struggling with the horrific aftermath of Hurricane Harvey and are still going to deal with more flooding and more rain in these next few days. I can't, as I said at the beginning of the show, I can't even fathom and comprehend what is going on in the lives of those affected. My heart is heavy. My heart goes out. If I was rich, so much money I would donate. If I could be there, I would be there right now in a boat doing whatever to help individuals in need. <coughs> Excuse me. So as you go about your day to day, ladies and gentlemen, as you may be on your way to the nine to five, getting your kids to, ready for school, doing whatever that is needed to start your day. I'm asking and I am pleading that number one, that when you have a minute and if you're able to, to get down on your knees and pray, and I mean pray for those dealing with the horrific, horrendous, unfathomable aftermath of Hurricane Harvey. May God continue to bless you and your families. May he keep you and your family safe. God bless. Peace. If tomorrow is our great getting up morning, yes, Amen. Uh, if tomorrow we have to meet the judgment day, uh, Heavenly Father, we want you to let our folks know uh, that we died facing the enemy. Yes. We want them to know that we went down standing up yes, Lord. amongst those that are fighting against our oppression. Yes. We want them to know, Heavenly Father, that we died for freedom. Yes. Amen. Amen. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. 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 Some areas have had 40 inches of rain. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. I have never experienced anything like this. I, I didn't even imagine that it was going to be this catastrophic like this. This is horrible. She's one of the many evacuees in Houston. 9,000 now crowding into the convention center shelter, nearly double what was planned for. Uh, we just had a rescue about an hour ago from someone who was driving in high water, <laughs> trying to get through. And that's what happens if you walk up and you go very far through this. I mean, right now it's up to my ankles, but you walk a ways and it's up to your up to your waist. And that's uh, <laughs> that's why we have these thousands of rescues that have taken place. Fox Business Network's Jeff Flock, where it could get worse in Houston, a reservoir expected to spill over in a few hours further flooding nearby neighborhoods at least 14 deaths are being reported as a result of the storm including six in believed to be submerged in a van that got caught up in flood water president trump will soon head to texas fox's rachel sutherland live in washington Dave, the president and first lady will visit Corpus Christi in Austin to witness the devastation of Hurricane Harvey. During a news conference at the White House yesterday, President Trump vowed to speed federal funding to hard-hit areas. We are 100 percent with you. We're praying for you. We're working closely with your leaders and officials. The president may visit Louisiana this weekend. Dave. And Rachel, the now tropical storm, Harvey, will make landfall again tomorrow, moving into Louisiana. President Trump spent 40 minutes on the phone last night talking to Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, who's upset over North Korea's latest missile launch flying over Japan. We will immediately gather information and analyze it and take all possible measures to ensure our people's safety. Two people are in critical condition in New Mexico the morning after a gunman. Reportedly, a teenager shot six people at the Clovis Public Library, killing two. He then surrendered to police. Fox News, fair and balanced. 
As thousands huddle in shelters around Houston, Texas, with all the flooding as a result of Tropical Storm Harvey, there's another problem for all those homeowners suffering all that flood damage. Insurance experts say only a small fraction of them have flood insurance. Some may be forced to sell if they can, and even leave the community afterwards. In New York City, there's another attempt to curb smoking by again raising the price of cigarettes. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio is setting three years for a specific goal. We want to reduce the number of New Yorkers who smoke by 160,000. Next June, the cost of a pack of cigarettes in New York City will jump to $13, most expensive in the nation. Mayor de Blasio says he's banking on economic reality to steer people from lighting up. By increasing the price, fewer and fewer people will choose to use these products. But those who oppose the hike say the move will only push people to the black market to buy unregulated cigarettes at cheaper prices. In New York City, Gernal Scott. Fox News. On Wall Street, stock futures are down pretty big before the opening bell as markets also fall in Europe. Now sports. Kansas City is in a royal slump. And the pitch curveball lifted in the air, left center field. And this one is gone. A two-run homer for Wilson Ramos. The Rays have busted it open. Tampa Bay blew out KC on ESPN. The Royals' second straight 12 nothing loss. They've been shut out four games in a row. Haven't scored in 43 innings. The longest streak in the majors since 1968. Five shy of the record. It's very hard when you're losing these types of games. Because disappointment sets in, frustration sets in. In. Royals manager Ned Yost. The Indians won their fifth straight beating the Yankees. New York fell three and a half back at Boston on the AL East as the Red Sox beat the Blue Jays. In the NFL, Lions quarterback Matthew Stafford's reportedly signed a five-year deal, $135 million, league's highest paid player ever. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News Radio. So inspirational. One time for your mind. Let it be known I'm led by God and never by man. Huh, huh, let it go. First of all, giving thanks to God for giving me the talent to rhyme. Gonna let my light shine for those still left in the darkness. Now let me ignite this ever burning fire within. Not a fallen fad or a devilish trend. I'm here to mend those broken spirits with all my positive vibes from inside. The past year's loss of life was abundant, but God's wisdom shines bright like a prism. Only one decision left to be made. Live life, wipe away the strife, spirit filled to the gills with this currency that will lead to eternity. Universally is my longevity. Looking at this world in front of me. Kids need shown the way Trailer park kids need a place to play Not worrying about hard times Bringing relief written down in these rhymes We all need space to grow Let the spirit fill you up from head to toe Putting things in the proper perspective Uplifting souls, the final objective I'm gonna do my part and much more This soulful hip-hop tour So we can be one nation under a groove as I show and prove there's more than life than material things Let us pray for a better day So we can live as brothers and sisters Always know that God is with you You are my inspiration Gonna spread your love across the nation Doesn't matter what type of problems that you're going through I'ma be there for you Politician, I made this political, not the ER. This mission is critical. There's a holy war going on. People using God as a rook or a pawn. Better seek truth. Christ is the living proof. Never be ashamed. Exalt his name. You know when I know there's only one way. So don't delay. These are the words that I manifest. Sick and tired of failing the test. We all have trials. 
trials and tribulations How we react leaves a mark on creation Set in my course to take the lead So many souls to feed Taking this mission to the next level Now it's time for the chorus to shine God bless You are my inspiration Gonna spread your love across the nation Doesn't matter what type of problems that you're going through I'ma be there for you Doesn't matter what type of problems that you're going through I'ma be there for you He talked about a certain man Who fell among thieves You remember that a Levite And the priest passed by on the other side They didn't stop to help him Finally a man of another race came by he got down from his beast, decided not to be compassionate by proxy. But he got down with him, administered first aid, and helped the man in need. Jesus ended up saying this was the good man, this was the great man. Because he had the capacity to project the eye into the thou and to be concerned about his brother.